Danger Dolan. From uncomfortably racist ads to a company that buried an entire city in balloons, we count 10 marketing campaigns that failed spectacularly. Number 10. Woolworth's Anzac Centenary Campaign. Anzac Day is sacred to virtually all Australians, so it's unsurprising that a recent Woolworths ad campaign attracted criticism for trying to exploit and commercialise the Anzac legacy. The campaign, created by third-party agency Carspace, invited users to share war tributes alongside the Woolworths logo and the slogan, Fresh in Our Memories. Woolworths market themselves as the fresh food people. So Aussies took this as overt branding. The campaign was an immediate disaster with Australians voicing their outrage on social media, describing it as crass and sleazy. Many used the campaign's picture generator to mock Woolworths. Carspace took no responsibility for the PR disaster, instead deleting its Twitter account and slinking away into the shadows. Number nine. Mazda's The Lorax Tie-In. This is like when Krusty won Springfield's respect by sticking it to the man, then sold out for a gas-guzzling Canyonero. 2012's The Lorax was an adaptation of Dr. Seuss's environmental cautionary tale. Unfortunately, the film's spectacularly misguided advertising tie-in linked it to a Mazda SUV. In the story, the truffle tree is wiped out when the Lorax makes a misguided deal with a greedy entrepreneur. So all you can do is groan when Mazda's ad gives its CX-5 the truffle tree seal of approval. Selling cars morally defies everything the story represents, and the Mazda CX-5 isn't even a particularly eco-friendly car. Instead of apologising, Mazda dodged the criticism and spouted some evasive BS about the auto industry needing to reduce its carbon footprint. Their apology even included the line, we're not out to please everybody, which is PR for go jump off a bridge. Number eight, fly free with American Airlines. In 1981, American Airlines ran a promotion giving customers unlimited first class tickets for a one-time fee. For a paltry $250,000, the A-Air Pass gave customers the Sizzler Buffet treatment. All the first class travel they could want for the rest of their lives. And for an extra one off $150,000, they could bring a buddy along every time for free. American Airlines presumed the pass would be used by high-end companies for business travel. They never predicted that ordinary civilians, albeit those who could cobble together a quarter of a mil, would get in on the promotion and go mad with power. But boy, did they. One guy flew to London 16 times in one month. Because why not? Another has flown more than 30 million miles, which is the equivalent of going around the globe more than a thousand times. The Buddy Pass also had American Airlines hemorrhaging money. One guy regularly offered his buddy ticket to complete strangers, just so they could get a taste of the good life. Why not? It was free. It wasn't free to American Airlines, however. After years of the program, the company realized many individual pass holders were getting a million dollars worth of free flights every year. Realizing their promotion made next to no business sense, the airline ceased issuing new tickets in 94 and hired a fraud investigator to hassle existing customers in case there were grounds to revoke their tickets. Number seven, Jägermeister Poison Pool Party. Like many PR disasters, Jägermeister sponsoring a huge pool party event for frat boys probably look great on paper. Sunny Mexican location, headache inducing base, and free booze for all the bikini babes and shirtless meatheads. Unfortunately, things turned sour when organizers dumped a whole heap of liquid nitrogen into the pool to give it some lame mist effect, like in a music video. Apparently, no one had bothered to research the effects of mixing pool chlorine with liquid nitrogen and it created a toxic gas called nitrogen trichloride. The potent knockout gas caused partygoers to hack, cough, and eventually pass out. Eight bros were hospitalized with one falling into an 18 day coma. It was one of the Bluth family's better parties. Number six, Renault, the N word. In 2007, car manufacturer Renault ran a UK ad that boldly claimed they couldn't use the N word for 10 days. They meant no, but the public thought their lame attempt at being provocative stunk of the S word, and I don't mean salmon. Renault wanted to portray itself as amazingly generous rather than disturbingly racist, but it seems that cold day in hell when racist jokes are funny has not arrived. Number five. Absolute Vodka sponsored Mexican Invasion. A few years ago, Absolute Vodka ran ads in Mexico showing a pre-Mexican American war map of North America. This was when several southwestern US states were still part of Mexico, and Absolute cheekily captioned it 
in an absolute world. To extremists, Absolute was inciting racial division by suggesting buying their vodka would help Mexico reclaim the United States. Americans and Mexicans alike found the ad offensive, so Absolute offered a lame, passive-aggressive apology, which basically suggested consumers were at fault for misunderstanding their intentions. That excuse probably made sense to them after a few vodkas. Number four, Sony, PSP White. Speaking of companies needlessly inciting racial division, Sony's ads for the white edition of their PlayStation Portable were hilariously misguided. The billboard advertisement which ran in the Netherlands showed a Caucasian model dressed in white aggressively clutching the face of a cowering black model. Sony claimed the ad made more sense in the context of the wider campaign, but it's more likely that they were trying to be provocative and bit off a bit more than they could chew. Another failed risque campaign for PlayStation featured posters at a UK train station platform. The posters read, Take a running jump here. These were quickly pulled on grounds of bad taste and amid fears they would spark public safety concerns. I suppose it was a notch up from their prototype poster design. Buy a PlayStation or kill yourself. Number three, New Coke. In the 80s, soft drink juggernaut Coca-Cola was losing ground to competitor Pepsi. Desperate to compete, Coca-Cola introduced a new product called New Coke, which had a sweeter taste than the original Coke. And my God, the public drank it up. However, like a wayward husband having a midlife crisis, the public soon started missing old Coke. Many chose to stock up on the original version, fearing it would become permanently unavailable. And Coca-Cola's colossal screw up became an accidental marketing masterstroke. Three months later, Old Coke was reintroduced as Coca-Cola Classic, where it again reigned supreme as the king of soft drink mountain. The failure of New Coke was rebranded Coke 2, but endured low sales before returning to its home planet. Number two, Burger King has no idea. Although this ad only ran in Singapore, it annoyed women the world over. It's pretty subtle, so in case you don't get it, the sandwich represents a penis. Ha, ha, ha. This isn't the first misfire from Burger King. The company's had more than its share of disastrous ad campaigns. For instance, in the 1970s, Burger King created a demented mascot called The Burger King, who looked outrageously creepy and liked sneaking into people's bedrooms. The Mad Monarch was eventually retired, presumably because he had a handful of arrest warrants to his name. Burger King also ran a highly sexualized ad to promote SpongeBob SquarePants. The ad had the Burger King pre-arrest measuring women's waists to the tune of Baby Got Back. Another ad featured a naked woman singing in the shower, while others caused offense to Mexicans and Hindis because of caricaturized representations. Number one, Virgin Mobile US. In 2012, Virgin Mobile US ran an ultra-offensive online ad that was thought to trivialize rape. The ad depicted a middle-aged man standing behind a woman, covering her eyes with one hand and clutching a wrapped gift in the other. Okay, so far so 50s sitcom. Until you read the accompanying tagline, the gift of Christmas surprise, necklace or chloroform? Not sure what kind of juvenile asshole conceived the ad, but Twitter users wasted no time expressing their outrage. Even founder of Virgin Group, Sir Richard Branson, who no longer owns Virgin Mobile US, condemned the ad, calling it ill-judged. That's it for this countdown. And have a good one!